Brown v. Board of Education's Supreme Court decision was a unanimous decision that outlawed segregation in schools and all educational places. Segregation in schools was state-sanctioned. As well to try to solve this problem, the government used a previous law named Plessy v. Ferguson. From this law, they used the quote, separate but equal, but in this case, it didn't really work. No. Brown v. Board of Education came about in Topeka, Kansas, following events that happened in 1951. A girl, a schoolgirl named Linda Carol Brown, the daughter of Oliver Brown, was denied enrollment at the nearest school to their home because she was a different race and that school was segregated. So Oliver Brown took this to court and sued the Board of Education in Topeka, Kansas. At first, it was denied. And so he continued to appeal the courts until it reached the Supreme Court. And that's where a 9-0 decision was decided in their favor. Not so much. When we, were, when we were small kids. In your hometown? Yes. Even in the mine. I mean, when you put it in for the mine, and you're a Mexican, you're going to the smelter. That's all there was to it. Good thing though is you did have opportunities afterwards. I, I didn't know it, but it, it was because of, because of Martin Luther King and his, and his stand for against prejudice and discrimination. Oh, our apprenticeships were open to us then. Before then, they were open, but not really, because when your name would, it used to work in that, with time, your name would come up and all of a sudden, someone would jump you. Well, after they started with affirmative action, that's what I want to say, they couldn't jump you. So if they, your name came up, you were going to that bridge that you put in for. At one time, I remember <coughs> mom telling me, back in the 30s and 40s, they had two high schools. They had one for the, for the Caucasian, one for the Mexican. But if you were a really smart Mexican, you could have a Caucasian one. But the rest of you, you're going to go to the Mexican, Mexican one. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't realize, it, don't know this, but it was actually a, a black school in Texas. Really? Yes, in Orange Canyon. I, if you look at it, it, it was a school. It was a school that before. We had black people come in <coughs> during World War II to help with all the work that had to be done. I went to the service. It was 1969, Martin Luther King had just been shot in 1967. So there was still a lot of racial tension there in the South. I can't remember what uh, what city I was in. It was in the South. I don't know if it was Alabama, Georgia. I can't even. But I, had, I was in a bus going somewhere and I had to stop to use the bathroom. So I walked into this bathroom and said, black, white. I said, I know I'm not black. I said, I didn't. No, I'm not white. <clears throat> so where do I go, the black or the white one? And I think I thought, I said, you know what? I'm gonna go to the black one. And, and I thought later on, I should have got him. No, I said, I'm in less trouble. But I got to the black one, the one. And I did, but, <clears throat> so that was, I mean, that was fairly, you know. Oh, yeah. Yes, you know. You, you, so I, I see that, I remember seeing the water fountain, the same thing. Even where to wash your hands, even where you would, uh, in the bus stations especially. Where you when my mom and dad came over here from Colorado in, I think it was 1941, my dad said that they couldn't go into a, a bar because it was just for whites. Yeah, they're in Duncan, right? In Duncan. You know what, this is sad to say, but I never had any dreams. I wish I would have had. I just lived, I just was one of those guys who what, what comes may come. And I wish now that, of course, it's always, you know, hindsight's always 2020. I wish I would have had a dream. And I gotta work for it, you know. Any dream that you have, you gotta work for it. It's not just given to you. And I started working, and it seems like time just caught on, and all of a sudden, I retired. I never really wish I would have had dreams. I see my granddaughter, so many dreams that they have, but the kids, they, a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them have dreams, so that's good. Dreams are like hope, they keep you going. <clears throat>